for certain that there was another kid out there in San Antonio tonight who woke up on November 5th, 2008, and heard the gay and lesbian people lost their rights in California, that they are still less than, they are still second class citizens, and I know all too well the dire solution that may have flashed through his or her head. And we've heard a lot about this, but the statistics are this, and I'd like and urge you to pass them along. The statistics from last year are that one out of three gay and lesbian kids uh, uh, seriously contemplate suicide. LGBT kids are four times more likely to attempt suicide than their straight brothers and sisters, and nine times more likely if they come from unaccepting homes. And for those who are brave enough to come out and do survive, 26% over one quarter are kicked out of their homes. That's not from 1978, that is from 2008. The religious right has climbed time and again that gay people threaten their families and threaten their children. But the truth is, the truth is these kinds of hateful homophobic messages are literally costing our world's children their lives, literally. So that takes me to my big point here. And it's what I found in my life to be universally true and I'm not alone. I wanna quote Julian Bond, the founding leader of the black civil rights movement of course and a great hero of mine and he said to me this, he said, Lance, good things do not come to those who wait, they come to those who agitate. And a Harvey Mo Milk quote leapt to mind when he said it, and it comes from uh, Harvey's first run for public office in 1973 when they said, it's not the right time yet, you gotta quiet down, you can't, you can't be pushing this hard, not right now, and he said to them, masturbation can be fun, <laughs> but it does not take the place of the real thing. It is about time that the gay community stops playing with itself and get down to the real thing. <laughs> there are people who are satisfied with crumbs because that is all they think they can get when in reality, if they demand the real thing, they will find that indeed they can get it. So what is the real thing today for the LGBT movement? What do I want gay, that gay and lesbian kid out there tonight to hear we are fighting for? I want him or her to hear that we have a dream and a vision of full equality. And for me, that dream sounds like this. We, the gay, lesbian, bisexual, and transgendered people of America, demand that the promise of our Constitution and Declaration of Independence be honored. We demand that the federal government act immediately, decisively, and unequivocally to ensure equal protection under the law for LGBT people throughout the United States of America. <laughs> right, full and equal federal rights, that is my dream. Because you know, no group has been able to win full civil rights in this country by only fighting state by state and county by county, and that work is so important. But even if Proposition 8 had failed in California, those marriage, marriages would not obviously have had federal benefits. They still would have been second class marriages. And I feel in my heart it is time for the gay and lesbian movement to dream bigger than the Proposition 8s. And look back to the example set by the Civil Rights Act of 1964. <laughs> It showed us loud and clear that full and equal rights can only come from the federal government. So I have a question. I know this is getting long, but I'm a writer, I get wordy. And I tried cutting, I promise, see? Um, all right, the question is this, what is the significance of the number 435 for our movement right now? That's right, congressional districts. And that is what is so important right now, is that we all, go and we all organize in all 435 congressional districts in this great nation. We must go there, we must fight in every district if we are going to win our full equality. And right here, right here in Manhattan, we have four of those districts, I believe, is that right? Four here. So I call on all of us tonight to organize in those districts, organize locally and think and dream federally. I call on you all to please march with me and all of our brothers and sisters from the other 431 districts to our nation's capital this October the 11th. And not just to make our voices heard, which is so important, but to organize and to organize and to bring that message back to the other 431 congressional districts so that we can spread our message from sea to sea across this great country of ours. Because you see, my belief is this. We have always been willing to serve our country in our armed forces, even as we are threatened with court martials and dishonor. As teachers, even as we are slandered and libeled and as parents and foster parents struggling to support our children, as doctors and nurses caring for patients in a broken healthcare system, and writers and artists and musicians and workers in factories, hotels, farms, office buildings, all of it, we have always served and loved our country. 
We have loved our country even as we've been subjected to discrimination, harassment, and violence at the hands of our countrymen. We have loved God even as we were rejected, abandoned by our religious leaders, our churches, our synagogues, and our mosques. We have loved democracy even as we witnessed the ballot box being denied, used to deny us our rights. And like our President Barack Obama, we have never, ever abandoned our hope in the American dream of full equality and freedom. We have never stopped believing that the Declaration of Independence, the Constitution, and the Bill of Rights include us. We have always kept faith with the American people, our neighbors, our coworkers, our friends and families, but today that faith is tested. And we find ourselves at a crossroads of history. And we all know here in this room that this is the civil rights fight of the 21st century. And I ask you this, will we move forward together? Will we affirm that the American dream is alive and real? Will we finally guarantee full equality under the law for all Americans or will we surrender to the worst, most divisive appeals to bigotry, ignorance, and fear? And I know in my heart that we will not. I have faith in the American people in the American tradition of spreading freedom. But it will not come to those of us who wait. We must agitate. We must, we must seize this moment. We must seize this moment and we must understand that freedom will not come until we as LGBT people in all 435 congressional districts are willing to commit the full strength of our own voices, minds, and bodies to the struggle to demonstrate peacefully when necessary, and as Dr. Martin Luther King said, even be willing to be arrested to it together to achieve equality. Because this is the big point, and we've heard it a couple of times tonight, but the big point is it, it is our obligation, our obligation to send a message to the LGBT, LGBT children in this country tonight and in the world tonight that life is worth living that we are fighting for their full equality from sea to sea, not partial equality in one area over another, and not equality in some distant future. And I know, I know the road will be rough, and I know there are many, many great challenges, but naming this dream today is so very important. Because to those of us in the room tonight, I know this sounds like politics and policy and hard work, but to the kids out there tonight who are afraid, I think it sounds an awful more like this. You are not less than. You have brothers and sisters, gay and straight, black and brown and white, thousands of us. And your struggle is our struggle and your fight is our fight. And most importantly, most importantly, you are loved and there is still hope for a better tomorrow. Thank you very much.